Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. As you can see from the screen and from below me, this is lesson two, still in unit one. Uh, the key points above me, uh, way above me, have changed. Um, but the, less, uh, the title of the course and my name and the logo haven't. So let's get right into it. Uh, lesson two is titled The Approaches to Psychology. So there's actually more approaches to psychology than the three we're going to talk about today, but we're going to focus on three of what are considered the most common or important ones. Um, and you can see above me that there are, um, you know, three key points. So hint, those are the three approaches. You know the names of them already. Uh, a person uh, who does the psychoanalytical approach is a psychoanalyst. Um, let's get into it. So a psychoanalytic um, psychology, psychoanalyst, is a psychologist who studies how unconscious motives and conflicts determine uh, human behavior. So what is really going on in your mind behind all of the stuff that you're talking about? Uh, and, uh, so the main person behind this, and you might recognize this name, is Sigmund Freud. So Freud was interested in the unconscious mind, not the conscious mind. He believed that our unconscious experience, sorry, that our conscious experiences are only the tip of the iceberg and that beneath the surface uh, there are primitive biological urges that are in conflict with the requirements of society and morality. And he came up with some different names for some different parts of the unconscious brain, uh, came up with some very interesting theories, a lot of which have been disproven, um, but this is kind of you know, a type of psychology that he developed. So like the, the type of psychology isn't wrong, but a lot of his conclusions were. Uh, so he believed that is the unconscious mind that controls a lot of, a lot of things that go on uh, with your behavior, and that is what is important in being researched. Uh, according to him, these unconscious motivations and conflicts are responsible for most human behavior and mental illness. Um, so if someone has, he believed if someone had a mental, mental illness, it was because of a conflict going on in their unconscious brain between these different portions that he had named. Uh, and that like something, if you could resolve that conflict, the mental illness would be resolved. Um, and it was also responsible for like your behavior if someone, um, you know, was an addict or, uh, you know, engaged in other behavior, like that was all due to underlying unconscious things going on in their brain. So Freud used a new method at the time for indirectly studying the unconscious process known as free association. A patient said anything that came to mind, no matter how absurd or irrelevant it seemed when the researcher just stayed silent. And you've probably seen these pictures in movies before. Something like this. So someone would just be shown this and they would say something. And often in the movie they would say something very strange because that is the point of, you know, they're trying to scare you. So uh, this, somebody would be shown this and they would free associate it. Uh, so free association, Freud believed, um, th is what he believed in, and it, he believed it revealed the operation of unconscious processes. You just blurted out whatever came to your mind. He also believed that dreams were an expression of the most primitive unconscious urges. So he was, you know, looking back, he was kind of a strange guy. The second type or key point two is a behaviorist, the behaviorist approach. So a behaviorist is a psychologist who analyzes how organisms learn or modify their behavior based on their response to their environment. And we're going to go essentially behaviorists are, in, behaviorists are interested in how organisms, humans learn things. Uh, why did they do that behavior? Why did they learn that? Did they learn that that makes them feel good or, you know, why are they doing that? Uh, we're going to have a whole unit on learning about why, uh, you know, different organisms will perform different behaviors. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that later. And we're going to talk about this guy as well later, Ivan Pavlov. Uh, he charted a new course for psychological investigation when he rang a tuning fork each time he gave a dog some meat powder. And essentially what this ended up doing was it caused them to salivate every time a bell was rung. Uh, the reason that is, is because a dog would normally salivate when the powder reached its mouth. So 
if you ring a bell and then you give the dog the meat powder, they are going to salivate whenever the bell is rung. After Pavlov repeated the procedure several times, the dog would salivate when it heard the ring of the tuning fork, even when it didn't get food. It was just expecting food, so it salivated. It had been conditioned to associate the sound of the food, uh, the sound with the food. We're going to talk about that so much more in detail uh, in, I believe, Unit 3. Uh, the concept was used by psychologists as a new tool as a means of exploring the development of behavior. Essentially, like you can give your dog a treat every time they sit, and then they learn if they sit, then they get a treat. Or, you know, different, uh, you know, if, if you do the work and you get a good mark, that is a behavior that you are being uh, rewarded for. So then maybe you'll continue to do the work and continue to get a good mark. Uh, so essentially a behaviorist would believe that um, your behavior is a product of your prior experiences. If you didn't get a good grade um, previously, maybe you, you don't feel that you can get a good grade or you don't feel you deserve a good grade. So your behavior produces your uh, expectation that you won't get a good grade. Maybe at the beginning of a class, if you start to get a good grade, that'll make you believe you can have a good grade and cause you to enact behaviors that cause you to then get a good grade later in the course. Uh, so behavior behaviors would be very interested in, in uh, you know, if how someone is, is doing at something, what did, how did they do previously? They believe that that is the best indicator of, of future behavior, is previous behavior. Uh, so psychologists uh, who, dis who stressed investigating observable behavior became known as behaviorists. So uh, these people aren't interested in why um, they're doing these things. They're just like making them do them. Uh, John Watson developed the theory that, psycho that psychology should concern itself only with the observable observable facts of the behavior uh, and you know you could modify that behavior but you know the reasons why or the motivations behind it John was not concerned about uh, Watson further maintained that all behavior even apparent instinctive behavior is the result of conditioning and occurs because the appropriate stimulus is present in the environment essentially he believed that humans react to their environment and that is it uh, in our school example, you would react, I would give you an assignment, you would, you would react to that stimulus, uh, and then you would, you know, your behavior would be the reaction to it. You would do well or you wouldn't. Uh, and then that behavior would show, and it would be the greatest indicator of what you'll do in the future. Uh, he didn't care why that was going on. That is just what he believed that the behavior was the most important thing. That you only reacted to your environment. And the last approach, which is a whole lot more warm and fuzzy than the last one, which is just about controlling what you do, is the humanistic approach. So humanistic psychology was developed as a reaction to behavioral psychology because it was so um, you know, rigid and kind of cold, if you will. Uh, humanistic psychology is a whole lot more warm and fuzzy. Uh, it's more about the person or what's going on inside and why that's happening. And it was mostly developed by Abraham Maslow, who described human nature as evolving and self-directed. So he didn't believe that the environment acted on you, you acted on the environment and you can control the events. So it does not view humans as being controlled by events uh, in the environment or by unconscious forces. Essentially, the environment and other out outside forces are just a background to our own internal growth. So the person is acting on the environment and uh, that behavior is, is looked at kind of differently than when the environment is acting on the human. Uh, so it's kind of just a fundamental difference in the way that you view uh, the way that the world works, essentially. Does, does the person act on the, on the environment or does the environment act on the person? Um, so the humanistic approach emphasizes how each person is unique as a self-concept and the potential to develop fully. This potential for personal growth and development can lead to a more satisfying life. Uh, essentially, you know, if, if you act on the environment to make it better for yourself, you can grow. Uh, and if you are safe, then you can move on to like the next level. Um, so Maslow had a lot of interesting ideas about people and how they should um, and how their behavior uh, identifies who they are. 
you can see below here that we have a um, diagram that's in your booklet. So you don't need to copy this down, but it kind of summarizes a lot of things that we've talked about today. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Uh, it kind of has some questions about, you know, what questions uh, each approach uh, would ask and that what they believe influences our behavior. So definitely uh, make sure you highlight some important points from there. Uh, and then we have the your job section. So there is the important terms that you should uh, be defining in the, in the uh, given area. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then a mini book assignment and the inf information on how to do that is in your booklet. If you are wanting more information about what I expect, Again, you can ask me in person, in class, over Google Meet or by email, whatever it works best for you. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone, and I will see you soon.